We're here tonight at our event about ethical fashion and we're talking about how we can be fashionable in a way that's sustainable and stylish and doesn't cost the earth. Yeah, my name is Lucas. I set up the Alive Boutique, which is an acronym and stands for A Little Vegan Boutique. And I'm going to talk about how to set up a vegan fashion related startup. And we're also going to talk about emerging trends in veganism and fashion. It's quite a long description, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, in December, I set up um, the online shop. Um, just basically before Christmas to get a bit of the Christmas rush in, uh, make a few sales and uh, we just launched as a, as a, with an MVP, literally just trying out a few things and yeah, taking it from there. Um, a little bit about myself, um, I moved to London in 2012 uh, thinking to myself what is the worst thing that could happen and I just basically thought I might as well have a great time during the Olympics here in London and never moved back. Um, it was funny actually, no one really turned up to my leaving drinks in Vienna because <laughs> they didn't even know, you know, I'm, I'm actually for real. They thought I'm coming to London to learn the language or something. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, five years on, I'm still here, um, actually with no intentions to leave. So if anybody voted leave last year, I have to disappoint you. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to get rid of me. <laughs> I'm staying. Um, yeah, so my background basically is working for ad tech companies, um, mainly in the e-commerce uh, retail environment. So all my clients were uh, mostly uh, fashion retailers and we delivered marketing campaigns for these guys. So this is all my background. And I took a traveling sabbatical last year in 2016, going for Asia, a bit of backpacking and during that time, I basically realized that I, A, want to work for myself, and B, I want to combine it with uh, veganism. And as you probably can imagine, uh, I learned a lot. Uh, again, the worst thing that could happen is that I learned something, and I learned a lot. I did a lot of research, and I want to share it today with you guys. I think I have to do it this way. No, there should have been a slide in between. No, I think that's it, sorry. So what did I learn? Uh, and what am I gonna talk about today? Um, I'm gonna share a bit of market data with you guys. Um, how actually big is the demand for vegan products and especially vegan fashion products? Um, what are new ideas? Uh, what are sub niches that are really, really emerging at the moment? Um, and how can you guys basically find uh, a vegan fashion idea? Um, once you have an idea, you know, you need to ideally validate it and we're going to talk about is the microphone working? Yeah. And we're going to talk about that as well uh, and also about the marketing and the growth hacking side of things. And at the end of the talk, I'm going to give you a free idea for uh, a vegan fashion uh, startup. Um, feel free to say hello. Um, please tweet, ideally with a picture. Tag us in there. You can find the handles at the bottom as well, and we're giving away uh, a voucher for 33%, which is an interesting number. <laughs> okay, as you probably have heard, veganism is growing, so that's, that's the good news already. Yeah, there won't be any bad news, but uh, veganism is growing. Uh, we can see it's being searched for a lot. Um, this number, this, this data is from Google Trends. Uh, you might have well uh, seen those slides already and yeah, it's just a good thing that these things are growing. If we have, take a look at the fashion side of things, um, we've got good news as well. This is growing as well because, as you guys can see, ethical clothing is going up and vegan fashion is still a bit small. So I, I, you know, last year when I did research, I asked myself, why is that? Why could that be? And then I realized no one really is Googling for vegan fashion. So they are actually looking for things like vegan shoes, which is the yellow slide here. So last year when I was traveling, I, I found out that the biggest gap in the market, the biggest pain point that apparently the users have are shoes, because shoes quite often are made of leather and that is not vegan. So. People like Bourgeois Bohem, they really add value by creating great vegan shoes. Um, are there any other products? Yeah, definitely. So we've got vegan shoes, um, but also stuff like, uh, for example, vegan boots. Um, as you can see, always during the winter time, 
the number actually goes up, people are Googling for it, people are looking for it, and also things like vegan jackets are becoming more and more popular. That is, by the way, global data, that is not just in the UK, and as you can see at the bottom, that uh, blue, um, it's probably a bit small, but in blue, that's uh, the data for vegan shoes. Um, Australia is quite strong here as well. Um, vegan boots are a bit more popular in the Americas, um, must be called there, <laughs> and also in Britain. And interestingly, uh, the vegan jacket, pardon me, the vegan jacket is only being Googled for in uh, the States, and we'll be talking about why that might be later. Cool. Um, so now we know basically everything is growing, but how big actually is the demand? Um, is anyone here familiar with Google AdWords? So you guys have heard about the Keyword Planner, very good. Um, if you guys want to create a startup, it's always good to look at the data of um, Google AdWords and really just see how much actually things are being Googled and searched for. So you just uh, create a Google AdWords account, um, type basically, go to the Keyword Planner uh, and then look for a keyword. I now put in vegan shoes, which you maybe can't read, but I put it in there. And uh, quite importantly is that you, I'm just gonna walk here, um, click here to only show close related ideas. Only that way you will actually see vegan fashion related um, search terms. And the good thing is it's being searched for a lot. So normally when you want to create a startup, it's always ideal to actually go for a niche, start small, and then, and then actually you can scale the product and uh, try, to, yeah, try to get more customers. And for a niche to have potential, you should basically have around 4,000 4, uh, searches. The good news is for vegan shoes, we have about 10,000 searches in the UK. So this, this product is uh, absolutely in demand. Um, also definitely have a look at long tail queries. I'm hoping I'm, hoping I'm not getting too technical here. Uh, let me know if I am. Um, this, however, is really important because here you can actually see uh, what trends you have. Um, is this a clear pointer? Yeah, we got one. So for example, here we got uh, vegan running shoes uh, with a very strong growth rate. Um, absolutely something you guys should look out for if you want to set up uh, a vegan fashion startup. Also look at, sorry, where was that? Also look at for ad group ideas. Um, what I found quite interesting is that it's not only uh, women that look for vegan fashion products, it's also the men. Vegan men's shoes are being Googled for quite a lot and they grow year over year more than 70%. So that is absolutely uh, amazing. Cool, so this way you can find ideas for your fashion startup. I hope that's relevant and I hope that's, that's cool. And ideally by this stage, you have an idea. Um, you already know what you want to do or what you could do. And uh, that's of course the time when you try to validate your product or your idea. Um, if you don't have an idea, sorry, if you don't have a product yet, oh shit, that was one too many. Um, is actually, actually no problem because you can actually reshare other people's content. Has anyone in this room ever heard about the Brevity brand? Okay, interesting. It's a vegan leather jacket from America. You guys remember I just spoke about the vegan jackets earlier. They're being uh, Googled in the UK. Um, has been a successful, um, yeah, successful Kickstarter campaign. I think you can buy the product already. In this case, what you guys could do is, um, if you have a product, for example, a vegan leather jacket, you just take pictures, uh, you reshare them over Instagram. Please tag the person in there, otherwise it's illegal. And then you can just see if the, if the stuff is um, actually popular. Uh, you would ask, for example, you know, to uh, double tap if you like this jacket, and you can actually see if those people like what you, what you have or what you're going to have. Um, always use hashtags. I'm sure this is not new to anyone. Um, however, you can use the tool webstagram.com to find relevant hashtags for your niche. Um, in our niche in fashion, quite popular is uh, vegan fashion, shoes and handbags. So do add uh, these because yeah, they will get you guys, get your pictures in front of other people. And don't forget to get a business account on Instagram. 
um, that is really useful because you will see when your people actually, when your followers actually spend time on Instagram. Cool. Does this all make sense so far? Or? Yeah, awesome, awesome. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask already. Um, once you have a product, it makes basically sense to ask people. There are a few tools out there. I'm sure you guys have heard of Google Audience. It's quite affordable, quite easy to get a few questionnaires answered. Pretty cheap and people are familiar with it. I think that askatest.com is pretty much a game changer. I've only, sorry. <laughs> I've only heard about these guys, uh, found out about these guys last week. It's pretty cool. What it does is you have a questionnaire answered and only by the end of the, of the questionnaire um, you will um, add a few more questions and they all have to answer these questions with yes. So for example, you could include questions like um, are you vegan or are you interested in a completely plant-based lifestyle? Have you bought fashion online already, like in the past or in the last 12 months? And only if they answer yes, that means these people are completely your target audience. And if they answer and finish the questionnaire, you can actually, you will pay, but you obviously get a very, very targeted lead. Um, same with Facebook ads. Who's familiar with Facebook ads in this room? Oh wow, not too many people, interesting. It's a really fun tool. I mean, that is really, that is cool because you can, you can play around a little bit and you can get very specific and very granular. For example, <coughs> you can target people um, who like uh, vegan pages and you can get really specific. Like, you could, for example, target only people who like vegan outreach or certain vegan pages. I think even a vegan geezer is, is, is in the Facebook tool. He was here earlier, I think. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so you could target him, for, for example, a vegan geezer, uh, <laughs> or uh, additionally, also people who buy fashion jackets, running shoes online. Uh, we mentioned the running shoes online, we mentioned the jackets online. Those are all possible and fast growing ideas. And the good thing is, if you have a product already that you want to show. Only people who are vegan and who like these kind of sites or who do have this interest um, will see your ads. And it's quite important because you will see how big that audience is. So Facebook will give you an estimation of how many people fall into that group. Uh, Facebook groups, uh, I think we vegans, we all use them a lot uh, as a vegan flat share group. Some of us have used, quite, quite awesome. Um, do use those groups uh, to share your stuff. Um, we have a few ethical fashion groups on there as well. Uh, people are very engaged. It's great to ask questions. And yeah, to get a bit of engagement from these people. Same applies for uh, Reddit uh, or subreddits. Um, of course, Instagram is an important channel, as I mentioned earlier. And yeah, just email your list. Ideally, if you have an email list already, uh, send out a survey monkey or type form questionnaires and yeah, ask those people what they think about your product, think it makes sense. And speaking of email, what I can really recommend you is basically Jeff Walker's New York Times bestseller, The Launch. That is just your kind of book, your kind of go-to resource if you have an email list and if you want to launch a product, this guy really has figured it out on how to do it um, the best possible way. Uh, yeah. I can, I can definitely recommend that. I, I, for example, I've recommended this book to yoga teachers and my sister, who's just opened an, an art gallery back home in Vienna. So it is really relevant for everyone. Awesome. Last part, basically, of my talk is about marketing and growth hacking. Does anyone know what growth hacking is? It's just one of these new buzzwords. It's basically it's just marketing on a shoestring budget. <laughs> Uh, which we all love and do because it's free. Email basically is still the number one marketing channel, believe it or not. Um, I know it's not sexy, I know it's not Facebook, it's not Instagram, oh no, uh, but it still works. 10% uh, of traffic coming, comes from email, it's not a lot, but this 10% is accountable for 40% of your revenue. So do make sure you get that email list. Why? Because in fashion it seems to be even more important. I'm sure you guys bought something online, fashion, once, and I'm sure you guys still get the newsletter. You might as well read it. 
That's pretty irrelevant. Uh. Um, <laughs> mainly it's because uh, social networks, yes, they are growing and yes, there are some good ones out there, like Instagram especially, but unfortunately they come and go. Uh, they all turn into a pay-to-play environment, so you know, you know what it's like on Facebook, you post something, but you actually have to boost um, those posts in order to be actually shown to anyone. And the email, however, is the opposite of that. It's permission-based marketing. So when you say you send out an email, and when somebody signed up to your email list, well, you can send them an email. You, know, you don't have to pay for that. People still open the, these emails, and it's pretty much the only constant channel out there, because all, all the other ones, they go up and down especially social media channels. Yeah, so how do you get those emails? So we talked earlier about you know, how to find an idea and how to maybe create a draft. Um, so what right now, what you should already have is a website. Put uh, an email opt-in on your site before you launch. That is very cool. Sorry, very relevant. <laughs> you should have it. And what's definitely quite cool is having a waiting list system on your site, so that is pretty, pretty sweet. It looks a bit like this. You sign up for, um, for uh, the, the um, you give basically give these guys your email address, and then you, you are in a, in a waiting list. That's awesome because I don't like to be the last one because I haven't referred anyone, right? I don't have any point. One point is one successful referral, and by basically Incentivizing me to refer more people, I can basically get higher up on that list. Um, that's awesome. What else do we have? Yeah, um, pop-ups are a little bit annoying, um, but do you use them? Why? Because they still work. Uh, you will still get those email um, on your site. Do you use a lead magnet? Like, get ten percent off if you sign up to a newsletter. Uh, it still works. Uh, you will get those users you will make sales, and that's what you want. Uh, in your email signature, just add it in there, uh, linking to a landing page where you just, again, talk about your business, talk about your new fashion product, pardon me, and yeah, get those emails from there as well. Uh, JV launch is a joint venture launch. Um, we have lots of amazing vegan businesses out there uh, just speak up, speak to those people. Uh, it might be that you're in, into fashion, but there's other startups like what, All Plants, or I don't know, so many others. Just speak to these people, what they could do, for example, in a joint venture launch, joint venture launch, sorry. Uh, they send out an email where they talk about your new vegan jacket, for example, and you do the same in your email, right? So you both talk about each other. It could be that All Plants, for example, uh, has a way bigger list so that will, of course, promote you a lot. And if they have a bigger list, and if they maybe disagree to work with you because they're so much bigger, it's not really a problem. Let's say you have two, 200 email lists and they have 1,000. What you could do is you just send it out five times. So I'm going to suggest that to them today. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. And do don't download the MailChimp app. That's what we are using at the moment today. On our stand, we're having the MailChimp app uh, set up, so if you want to sign up to a newsletter, we are using that right now. Pretty cool. Right, Instagram, right? I don't think I need to tell you guys a lot about that. Um, it's still a great channel. Uh, I know I just uh, slacked off some social media channels, but for the moment, this channel is an absolute beauty, mainly because I think vegans love food. We love our food. I think we're very passionate about our food, even more so than others. And yeah, Instagram is the place where we share it. Um, that's, that's just, yeah, makes it a great channel. Just my personal recommendation is don't get too used to it because they are owned by Facebook, so it will be the next pay-to-play environment. I'm afraid, actually, in a very few months, maybe this year. Definitely post regularly. Um, if you want to post twice a day, post twice a day at least once a day, do it like every day. Uh, use Buffer, Buffer to do that. Uh, Buffer just helps you to get constantly reminded uh, uh, on when uh, it's time to post. And damn it, did I? Did I just speak about Instagram all the time? On this slide? <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> 
Apologies for that. So this is your slide, sorry. <laughs> yeah, for the moment this channel is a beauty, uh, highly engaged traffic. Wow. Uh, like where is my content? There it is. Um, I've got one marketing blog or blog post that I do want to recommend you all, all you guys. Um, it's called Growth Hacking Instagram by Austin Allrad. Uh, his growth hacker is literally the best marketing article I've found. Uh, two things you'll learn maybe. It's about finding a persona and or your avatar who's practically your perfect client, right? So every business has one ideal client that we all that we all want to go after. And Instagram gives you guys the opportunity to find them. They tell you all about it in that article. I recommend you read it. Read it. Um, it's, it's yeah. It comes across like stalking, but it's legal stalking, so it's alright. <laughs> Uh, the second thing you'll learn is how to grow back in Instagram. So just read it, grow that channel, get a few followers, like a few thousand followers, and it really, really works. Um, yeah, this is where Buffer is. That's, that's what I realized, you know, that's missing on this slide. There we go. <laughs> Use Buffer. Yeah. Who's familiar with Buffer? Yeah, a few people also. Yeah. Use it, it will remind you once per day um, to uh, schedule uh, or yeah, put something live on Instagram. Um, and once you get to a few thousand followers, uh, maybe more than 1,000 followers, you can do shouts for shouts. I just mentioned all these great vegan startups that we have. Uh, just stick to these guys, you know, do shouts for shouts. So they basically do shout out for your business and you do the same for them. And live videos and stories. It's just another growth hacking channel. Why? Because it's still free. Yeah, we don't have to pay for it. We'll stay on top of our followers' minds. It's just a beautiful product. And at the moment, it's still ad free, but that will change very soon as well. Facebook will put in advertising in Facebook live videos. It's gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know the slide already? Um, for blogging, that is also a good uh, channel. Why? It's free. It's just, it takes a bit of time, but uh, it's still great gives us credibility, the more we write about our business, and I should do the same. The more we write, the more people will see, okay, that person actually knows what he or she is talking about. Um, <coughs> same here, you, do, you should do it regularly. Uh, just uh, I don't know, commit to one day per week where you just sit down and write something and share it. Uh, also share it over, what's it called, Google Plus, even though no one's using it, <laughs> using that. The good thing is, if you share something on a Google Plus, the good thing is it's getting indexed right away. So if you don't share it over Google Plus, you could put something on your site and only in the next 14 days actually Google will notice that you put it there. But putting it and sharing it on Google Plus right away, it's getting into it's, it goes into Google's uh, index uh, immediately and that helps you uh, being found actually on the internet. And last but not least, do guest blogs on other platforms to give you social proof. So you could, for example, I know, do a guest blog on Vegans of London, for example. Um, and ideally, Serena would do a post as well on your site to give you more social proof. Cool. Um, a few general tips on how to start. Um, I don't want to educate anyone here. Or it's just basically that over the last few weeks and months I've learned all of this stuff. Um, at least these are a few things I've learned or that could be relevant for you guys. Uh, Ashhack by Green Stake is a company that does talks uh, on Google campus and they specialize in fashion. They're doing one talk in a week um, on Google campus just around the, around the corner from here uh, where you can just learn a lot about the fashion vertical on mainly the marketing and the legal side. But it's just all stuff we want you to know. Um, WHA, work hard anywhere. is an app to find cafes and restaurants to work from. Uh, it's just great, you know, to get, uh, to get a, to actually find a place where you can work from. Uh, if you find some places in London that have a re review for the vegan options, that's probably me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that just yeah, helps you find places to work from, but you always have uh, lots of co-working spaces in this great city. Uh, I just mentioned Google Campus, which is for free. 
probably has the fastest internet in the world. Really, really cool. And also, uh, I think the Hoxton Road isn't that road. And you have Ace Hotel on Shoreditch High Street. They are both 24-7 work uh, co-working spaces. And they're also both free. Cool. Yeah, I did mention the free idea. Um, subscription, subscription businesses are growing. They're big, they're massive, uh, and they're the future. Oh, we in terms of, oh, sorry, I shouldn't, sorry. Um, yeah, they're profitable. Um, they're not going anywhere. Amazon is using them, so that is a good sign. They're not the only doing stuff that actually is working. Uh, vegans love the t-shirts. We've got great ones over there. A few good ones over there as well. And if you basically create a vegan version of BustedTees.com where you can subscribe to the t-shirt of the month, and if you veganize that idea where you can get a vegan t-shirt of the month, I think, I think you can make quite some money quite quickly because Busted Tees are massive. And if we get, if you, if you create a, a, a vegan version of that, just targeting the 1%, the 1% that's vegan, I think that's definitely a possible idea for a uh, vegan business. Cool, why is all of this stuff important that I'm talking about? Um, long story short, we're getting there. The whole world, however, is not vegan yet. Uh, we, however, can make a change, that's my opinion. That's basically why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, it's just about helping people, I think. Helping people get our stuff. Sorry, yeah, helping, helping people find our stuff that's vegan and just offering it to them. Just, I think Laura mentioned it earlier, you know, if you do mention that it's cool, be free, they will just love that stuff. They will ask questions, you know. Of course I want something that's uh, cool, be free. So we need to give uh, those people these products. It's about vegan food, it's about cosmetics, as we have it over there, and also about vegan fashion. Because after all, um, what always has motivated me a lot when I set up my business is this, this strong belief that I think the future is vegan. The future is now. That's what I can say. It's not really a question, but it looked like you needed some something, someone to say something. Um, I'm just going to recommend Schedugram. I don't know if you've, you've actually seen that before, Lucas. Can we go to you, Schedugram. So it's the Instagram scheduling tool. So it's actually, you can sign up and schedule uh, content that goes out. It's not like a buffer where you have to, um, where you get the reminders. It's actually like an office in Australia. They've got a load of guys built some kind of crazy software with it where it just uploads it automatically. So I just thought I'd recommend it because it's, it's a great tool. I was going to ask, does it, does it do it completely automatically? Yeah. I don't have to do it. Yes, yeah, so you, you schedule it just like you schedule content on, on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Sketchygram. Ske Sketchygram. Love it. Um, can I just add, if you're on Android, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. If you try it, it might work for you. It could just be my phone, but I find it doesn't work. Not the Android, eh? <laughs> okay, hold up. 
Lucas, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.